brought to you by Eric Air. Eric Air, Wings of Nigeria. Hi everyone, welcome to Ayurveda Africa. I am your host, Anya Fudina. Today we're in Ikoi, Lagos, at the showroom for Drew by Lisa. We're going to be talking to Lisa Falalio, who's the creative director for the brand, and also Zara Opara, who's PR maven. So let's go and have a beautiful, inspiring conversation. Hello, Lisa. Hi. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank now, you. Now, I've been a fan of yours Thank for you. ages now. Um, you're known as the Ankara Prince. And I remember seeing your collection during them Arise in New York. I think okay. it was like the first or the second one they had. Okay. And your stuff, and I was just like, oh my god, like she just took Ankara Prince to the that was the whole point. next level. That, that, that was the point. Yeah. I mean, when Drew Balisa started, the, the whole idea was to change the face of Ankara, as it were, because I mean, it is a fabric that we know and have come to love in. Nigeria and, and in West Africa. For me, it was changing this fabric that we were so used to and making it something to be desired once again and making it luxurious. The whole idea was to make very cool, stylish pieces and of course with the um, added embroidery and embellishment that we are known to do, I think we were able to achieve that. Why was that transition important for you? I think as a designer, you, t you want to to try things and you want to see how far you can go and you have to just kind of break outside of what you are known to do mm -hmm. and for us it's all about print and for me it didn't matter after a while if it was Ankara or any other print and I think for me it was best to design my prints and produce my prints. Mm -hmm. And you've had a lot of sort of global success in terms of you translating our culture, our way of life, our everyday living yeah. to somewhat of a Western audience, if that's what you yeah. want to call it. Did you think about that going into when you started designing? For me, I always thought more globally mm -hmm. and I always wanted to make pieces that appealed to people the world mm -hmm. over. So be you here in mm -hmm. Nigeria or Africa as a, mm -hmm. as a whole, or be you in Europe or in America or wherever, mm -hmm. I wanted my clothes to have that appeal. Yeah. I look at you, for example, I follow you on Instagram. And I'm like, oh my gosh, god, I used to watch style and like. I think for me, it's really about the way you infuse yourself as a woman. Mm -hmm. Like, you basically design for, you design for yourself to some degree. You know that, indeed, I do to a certain extent because I will not design pieces that I don't, I can't see myself wearing. Mm -hmm. I do have my muses, I mm -hmm. do dress people in my mind mm -hmm. and imagine what she would wear or. Our aesthetic is, is clean. Mm -hmm. I try to keep it quite modern and fresh and with, with detail. That's what I think dressing is about. You know, clean and classic and simple, but then, you know, those little details mm -hmm. that just take it over the edge. How do you advise young designers about putting a retail strategy approach as a designer their label? Nigerian retailing here, I think price point is very important. Mm -hmm. From the start, it's always been a global approach. I'd never, you know, limited myself mm -hmm. to here. And so with our PR and mm -hmm. everything else and being able to show our pieces and send lookbooks out and bring out collections as much as we can. We may not do three, four, five different collections in a year, but at least two or three will do. And reaching out to buyers and thank God they reach out to us. And it just kind of, it's its like a natural, snowball effect. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. snowball effect, thank you. We were in Selfridges with the yes, Indiana yes, Project. we were. And uh, you just did a collaboration with L'Oreal as well, not just a few months back, with L'Oreal with the lipsticks. Yes. So how do you, quant do you quantify that as like, oh, we've reached, we, we, we keep going further and keep knocking down, breaking down international doors? At the end of the day, we are doing what we love to do. I am celebrating Prince, I am celebrating where I'm from, I am celebrating women, fashion, and if these things happen along the way, then wonderful. Mm -hmm. But I haven't even reached a, like a, a hundredth of where I see myself going. Going with the brand. Yeah. yeah. Challenges are producing in Nigeria. We are faced with challenges every day. You have a collection to do and you have your machinists who just don't turn up. But you, you get on with it and you do what you have to do. And, and for me, I think that I, I tell my, my technical staff, I say, for me, the finishing of a garment is even more important. It, it, there's nothing like it. And so I have to be 
with them as they're working and making sure we're producing to the um, level that I think we should. But then again, in terms of numbers, right. now, so when you, I guess when you maybe start to to uh, grow, you have to consider production outside of Nigeria because we don't yet have the uh, maybe facilities or, you know, to be able to produce a certain beyond certain numbers within a given period and to get that finishing that you want. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the industry. What inspires you? I want to do and be and give the best that I can. I'm always striving to do better. As a mother, I want to do the best and even better than that mm -hmm. with my children. Um, as a wife, the same. Be the best wife I can be as a designer. I want to be able to do better with every single collection mm -hmm. that I am able to bring out. And generally in life, I think that we all have a purpose and I think that it's important when you're given an opportunity to do the best you can do, you know. And for me, that, that's what keeps me going every single day. Mm -hmm. That's what inspires me every day. And I think, well, I can do this just a little bit better. Right. And that's how I live. We're here with her PR, <laughs> the PR guru for the brand. <laughs> Zara of Mara. Thanks for joining us, Zara. Hello, thank you. Thank you for having me, I guess I should say. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zara, what do you do here at um, JBL? I essentially am the head of PR and communications for Joe by Lisa. Um, my job essentially is to push the brand, to make you want the brand, to make the brand desirable to, to, to you, to our, our clients, to our customers, to um, people who haven't heard of the brand before, mm -hmm. um, really to, to make Joe Balisa a household name. My aim is at Joe Balisa mm -hmm. is really to see the brand from a small local brand mm -hmm. to becoming a global international brand. And from a PR perspective, you've had celebrities who've, you know, dressed the red carpet mm -hmm. events where yeah. Joe Balisa. Mm -hmm. Can you name some of three people? We've had Tandy Newton, mm -hmm. she's a British actress, which is quite amazing. She wore our um, Ankara Bida jumpsuit, jumpsuit yeah. which I thought was quite um, nice how she wore it. We had Solange wear our shorts and for a shoot, a photo mm -hmm. shoot. We've had stylist June Ambrose, we've had Ease um, presenter Kat oh, Sada. Yeah, 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 Kat Sada. I mean, we've had a couple of pieces here and there, seen on a few people here and there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of hats over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, is that a bit challenging, especially working in the local Nigerian market? Yeah. Yeah. For me, working here isn't a task yeah. at all because it's something that I, I think about. When I leave here, I'm thinking, how can we push the brand? You know, like, it's almost to the point where it's like my own brand now. What can we do to make it, make it better? Mm -hmm. So that, that's where I, I stand. But I think that, you know, in terms of what I would say is challenging is really sort of taking the idea of PR, the idea of branding, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and making that work for you locally. locally. There's so many other things, so maybe newspapers, maybe magazines, maybe this day style, maybe online, maybe, you know, we have to, it's, it's a constant struggle yeah. really, it really is a constant struggle because it's not the norm, you know, I have to come up with creative ways to push the brand. And it's such a, it's sort of a new business approach, it so it's like it everyone is, it is, is just, it's like trial and error, but there's it no is. blueprint. Yeah, no. There's no blueprint, no. so no. I guess you guys are like the trailblazers. Yes. <laughs> Scapegoats. <laughs> Scapegoats. Scapegoats is correct. Scapegoats is correct because when I first started working here, I don't think there was anyone that was really like the main, the main like, person PR for this person brand. For, for a fashion brand. I think I was one of the first who, one of the first people that worked with like a, a small growing brand yeah. that was dedicated to PR. So you have a connector in the whole equation. I think so. I think that's a good way to put it. I always have to bring myself back and say local and, and global. global. Local and global because I think it's quite important to be able to connect both. Yeah and to be able to not forget where we are. Definitely. You know, we don't forget where we are and not forget that this is mm -hmm. our flagship, this is where we are, mm -hmm. we're based here. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we can be based here and still be, you know, in Selfridges or in my, on mytheresa.com or in a new showroom in New York or in, be doing something in Milan and then still come out to Lagos and exactly. produce a collection. And produce yeah. a collection, yeah. That's, you know I mean? that's, that's, yeah. that's very impressive. Now for the young girls, for the young guys, mm -hmm. yeah. what advice can you give them? Because I feel like sometimes people see fashion as a hobby, yeah. which is fantastic yeah. if you're able yeah. to make a living out of it. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it has to translate into numbers for the designer. I definitely study, definitely do your research and have that desire. Mm -hmm. For me, I would my preference is fashion because that's what I love naturally. Yeah. That's why that's why I feel the most comfortable. I can come in here and I know that it's not it's clothes and it's not trivial. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's a good business. It's a great business. Mm -hmm. It's a, a lucrative business, mm -hmm. and and that's sort of 
how I enjoy what I do. Me, art, and because yeah. I'm like, passion yeah. is yeah. art. Yeah. You know, it's like you're telling definitely. stories through fabric, through yeah. designs, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. everything. Yeah. So yeah. definitely things inspire you. You know, mm -hmm. like music mm -hmm. or travel, and and definitely when you think about these things, you think, oh, how can I incorporate that into fashion? Into fashion, yeah. Definitely. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Eye of Africa. Also, thank you to Lisa Falawiyo and Zara Okwara for joining us today. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes.